In this episode, I'm going to show you how to properly debadge your car. Welcome to another episode of Mr. Duong TV. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to debatch your car. You might have noticed that on my car now on the boot, I don't have that WRX low profile spoiler anymore. It's because I've recently upgraded this to an STI genuine boot and spoiler. So with this being a genuine boot and spoiler, there was an STI badge right there, which I have debadged. How do you know that this is a genuine STI boot? Well, underneath you can see the screws and the screws allow you to move a small piece of the wing there, which I've never done. I've done this quite a few months ago now. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps on how to properly debadge your car. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Just about to install the new boot. Just gotta take this one off first. Because the boot that I bought, the owner took off all the lining, the reverse camera and everything. So for this one, I gotta take it off as well. Pretty easy, just a few clips. Right, and I do have aftermarket license plate lights. So I've got to take those off. The one I bought doesn't have a reverse camera, so I've got to take that off and replace it. This wing is not bad. I mean, it's a bit dirty at the moment. It looks stock. You know, it does have this low profile lip, which I kind of like. I don't know how I feel about it with the wing and the low profile lip, but I definitely appreciate the low profile lip by itself. The reason why I'm changing the boot is just because it's genuine stuff. In case I want to sell the car, it's easier to get rid of it. So that was super easy. Really no need for tutorial. Literally just one, two three and four, take that off, put that on, and there you go, love it. I think it looks so much better with just the clean look without the low profile lift there. Next job is to remove that emblem because I don't have an STI. I wish I did, but unfortunately I don't. So next job is to remove that. All right, it's super windy today, so you might hear a lot of wind noise. Now, I watched a few tutorials on how to debad, and the best tutorial I saw was from detailing YouTube channel and Allah I've been following for years. Larry from Ammo NYC. He was explaining you know all the precautionary measures to debadging your car and I put the link up there somewhere or in the description box. This was made a long time ago by Larry and I reckon it's still very applicable even by today's standard. There's glue holding the emblem in and basically what you want to do is use a heat gun to heat up not the glue then use fishing wire or dental because I don't fish I just got floss and use it to kind of etch etch it off. Now what some people do is pick off with the fingers or with a blade or something. When you're heating up paint, you're picking up from one from this side, you're just digging it in on the other side. It might be gouging out some paint. You'll be scratching your paint and maybe even creating little dents. So after this I want to show you how to get rid of the residue underneath but let's get started with this first. If you don't have a heat gun, just a regular hair dryer will do. Though, if you enjoy working on your car or do a lot of work around the house, one of these will set you back about 40 bucks and will last you a long time. Now that I'm looking back at how I did this project, I remember how annoying it was to use the floss. I had to constantly replace the floss because the heat would split whatever amount of floss I had in my hands. Some fishing line probably would have made my life a lot easier. If you look closely at the SCI badge, you'll notice that it's starting to discolor the longer I heat it up. This is because I had the temperature set way too high and held the gun way too close to the badge. The best way to do this is to set it on a medium temperature and patiently heat up the glue at a safe distance. It's like heating up a pie. You don't want the outside to be as hard as a hockey puck while the inside is still cold.
If you do end up killing the badges that you want to reuse, you could always go back to the dealer and trade one of your kidneys for a brand new one. So this is what we're left with. It's really furry, just double-sided tape that's been tried up. I think I set the heat gun to super high because the badge is completely toast. Melted some of the plastics, so that's no good. I mean, fine. I don't think they're that expensive from the Subaru dealer anyway. Now to get rid of that, you can do one of two ways. You can use a plastic razor to just scratch it off. What I've got is this stripe removal and this is generally used to rub off these kind of things. Emblems, stickers, residue on cars and paint. All you gotta do is Put that on, attach it to a drill, like a hand drill impact driver, and it was like $15 ruse from the auto store. So let's give that a go. So this thing's really simple, it's like a giant rubber, and you just do it at low speed so that it doesn't burn the paint. Let's see how we go. So this is already so much easier to use than I'd expected. I already got that much off. With this part of the project, you also want to control the speed of the drill and force you apply to the paint. If either the speed or force applied is too great, you could end up burning through your clear coat and then you've got a problem on your hands. Alright, so there you go. Maybe about 5 minutes, 6 minutes and it's all gone. I'm not sure you can see, but there is a little bit of the ghost writing, phantom writing left over from the emblem and all the dirt over the years just got stuck in the sides. So I've got a bottle of waterless wipe. Now I keep this in my car just in case there's like some bird dookie or just something dirty on the car and I don't want to wash it. Alright, so that's gotten rid of some of it already. There's still a bit of residue left, so... Alright, barely anything there. Right now, because we just basically put a whole heap of scratches on it, I want to use a foam cutting pad. We'll do some compound just on that small area there, and I want to polish it off. I've got a Meguiar's pad, yellow foam cutting pad, using Meguiar's ultimate compound. Because I'm just doing a small area, just that much, just to prime it first, clean off area. We need to polish the paint after putting a whole bunch of micro scratches on the car. I'm using a Meguiar's foam pad because I noticed that there weren't too many scratches. I use a compound to flatten the clear coat, then a polishing compound to top it up. If the scratches are much deeper, you might want to use a microfiber or wool cutting pad. I know that most people won't have one of these polishes and you really don't need one. But having one definitely makes your life a lot easier. I bought this dual action polisher from the eBoy for about $85 roos. If you don't have a polisher, you could use a foam applicator pad that goes for about two to four dollar roos. However, this method requires you to use a lot more physical force and spend more time rubbing in the chemicals, which could right, be very tiring. It's basically all gone. Can't see a single remnant of that. Because we just compounded, we're gonna use some polish to clean it up and make that look real nice. So again, because it's a small area, just use small dots of the polish. I only have this one size polishing pad, but if you've got a small one, you can use a smaller size. I normally use this larger pad to polish the whole car. It would probably be cleaner to use a smaller pad so that you don't have the residue flying everywhere. And that is it. Job well done, Mr. Boom. Easy as. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you properly debadge your car. If you have any comments or any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment just below the like button. If you enjoy what you see, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe and bell icon. I'd really appreciate your support here on the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.